Um, hi, my name is Abina Manning. I'm director at an organisation called the Video Data Bank. Uh, we're a distribution organisation and we're based at the Art Institute of Chicago. It's an organisation that's been in operation for about 40 years, coming up on 40 years the same length of time as the video art form, more or less. Uh, we do distribution, but also we're heavily into preservation. Um, um, we do a lot of programming, educational work, etc. Um, I'm here at the festival, and it's a real pleasure to be here, to present uh, two programs of work by Harun Faroki. Um, Harun Faroki is an artist who has been making work since the mid-60s, and who unfortunately passed away this July at the age of 70. So it's been a real pleasure to look at and think about his work. Uh, we have a lot of other artists in the festival, uh, one group, Flatform, who is performing here. Um, and there's a lot of other artists around town that I'm happy to see. Deborah Stratman is another artist we distribute who was featured this year. And um, it's great to be here. I haven't been in Montreal for 20 years. It's always kind of a pleasure when somebody gives you a task in a really short amount of time to do one thing because uh, my job is very administration led and so to, um, to, do, to do programming is always great but this had a deadline and so I watched a lot of the work that we have in distribution. I've seen it all before but when you're curating something you need to think about how pieces work together. So I watched everything again. I locked my office door for two days and I watched a lot of work. And there was great work I didn't show, but I came up with two, three, two programs based on those screening sessions. And it really helped me to think about Faroki's work and the arc of his career, because he he's just was 70 this year. But his work's suddenly been recognized by the art world in a big way in the last, I'd say, five years. The work he's, he was making in the, uh, over the recent times is quite different from some of the earlier work, but watching it all together, you could really see the arc of his project. He had a very consistent project throughout his life. It's political work. It's based on examining our reality and looking at the metadata of our daily life and kind of un unraveling some of the things that we take for granted. So the first piece is called um, In Comparison. It's a wonderful piece, it's nearly an hour long, so I hesitated to show it, but I couldn't stop thinking about it, so it was in the program. And it's basically about bricks. And for me, that's really a metaphor for Faroki's work because he's, he's talking about dismantling the bricks of society in many ways. And so this program looked at the making of bricks in a number of continents and countries, Burkina Faso, in India, in Switzerland, in Germany, in France. And he kind of takes us through brick making as a, a village endeavor with the whole family involved, you know, women with their children on their backs and uh, men, and everybody's laughing and talking. And then you see the same process in India where it's, a little, it's also a, a much smaller family endeavor or local endeavor. Um, it's a bit more serious um, through to Europe where you know, it becomes more and more a factory uh, um, production. And as he's doing that, he's, sh he's showing, I mean, it sounds kind of boring, but he's showing how the bricks are made and fired in these different environments. And but it's kind of mesmerizing. I, I find it fascinating to watch. And I, I love with Faroki the way things end very suddenly. And so you're in this very industrialized factory environment where he talks about the bricks being like pixels. And so that brings you up to date with his, his more recent work, which is much more about digitization and video gaming or wall footage. So the middle piece uh, yesterday is called I Thought I Was Seeing Convicts. And it's a short piece he made about, uh, I think it was a collaboration with a Chica um, Californian prison, prisoner society. And they are looking basically at the prison yard, the, the prison yard where 
prisoners are allowed to exercise, but he's looking in particular at video footage shot in the prison yard where prisoners are fight and for many years they would be shot first with rubber bullets and then with live bullets and he explains throughout the course of the video that in many ways the prison guards were um, complicit in who was put in the prison yard together and they were even betting on who was going to fight and who was going to win the fight but it's very much about surveillance footage and the panoptic of the prison yard and um, he begins that video with a, a short moment where he's talking about designers of supermarkets and how they track shoppers with surveillance footage in, in the um, supermarket and then he jumps to this subject of the prison yard. And the last piece was Parallel and Parallel is something he made uh, I think three or four years ago which then became a larger four part installation and Parallel looks at um, computer gaming, a seemingly innocent subject, but he, he's looking at how trees were made or, or, or depicted in, in, the fur, in the early days of video gaming and how the image, um, the, the image depiction has changed over the time. So this was a tree, a very small pixelated tree in the, the 80s and up to, up to now where things are where, where basically the computer gamers are trying to um, replicate the real world. So he's examining that. And Parallel, the series, which has shown quite a bit over the last few years at um, MoMA in New York, and it was recently at Hamburger Bahnhof in Berlin, um, the, the final installation depicts different different aspects of computer gaming imagery um, and one I really love is that I can't remember if it's part two or three but he's looking at the peripherals of the gaming world the edges of the world and he's he's walking characters to the end of the world to see what's there